The other thing we're going to do is. Uh, Don't need to give you a hammer. Uh, right you no. Or a gavel. Or maybe get a gavel. Oh, 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 Good evening, everybody. It's 6.03 p.m. on December 19th, 2022. I'm calling the meeting of the San Carlos Estates Water Control District to order. Present, the supervisors, Chairman Jim Bradford, Vice Chair Jennifer Fanazzo, Supervisor John Salusi, Salusi, <laughs> and Secretary Treasurer Chris Lawson, Attorney Richard Pringle, Engineer Ron Edenfield, and let's see, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven uh, landowners and visitors. So it looks to me like we're all one visitor, the rest are landowners. Okay. <clears throat> Let me grab the agenda here real quick. I got busy doing other things. And, okay. Okay, Ron, you're up. Engineer's report. Sorry about that. I'll call But all right, take your time. Rigorously making notes. Oh, while, while I still have the floor for a moment, the people who uh, manage and run this place are out of town. Therefore, we have to be finished by a certain time this evening. I'll keep that under my hat, and I'll tell you when you have to leave. <laughs> 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 okay. okay. The alarm will go off and won't be able to do the reset if we're not out of this building. So, there are benefits to being the chair. Okay. So, so we need we do need to keep the we do need to keep this meeting moving along this evening. Well, be quick about it. Quick. Okay. Uh, for the previous month since the last meeting, uh, we've completed uh, with respect to driveway permitting, we've completed thirty-six inspections. Some of them are the same size twice. We try to get down here at least every other week uh, in order to conserve all expenses to the district. Uh, but we have uh, on occasion come down in between that interval uh, when something is present. Uh, we finalized five permits. And speaking with Chris, we're going to go back and double check. Uh, staff has reported that there's seven open permits, and I believe that's for RMEC, we need to go back and edit that, and I'll update Chris's number on that to include more a few applications that are still open. Uh, we'll go back and confirm that number. Uh, and we've, uh, we're showing seven new applications in since the last meeting, so things are really busy out there. Um, I did want to get some direction from the board on uh, we're, we're starting to to accrue a large stack of right-of-way use agreements. And those are the agreements that the landowner signs, acknowledging that they will be responsible for maintenance and repair and warranty of the, uh, the, the improvements they make within the right-of-way. We're getting a rather large stack of those that need to be signed. And the question to the chair and the board is, or would you authorize the district engineer to sign those? Would you prefer that the district attorney sign those? Or would you prefer that the secretary sign those? Or would you prefer that the chairman sign those? Sign I, what? My first preference is chair mm -hmm. uh, to sign those documents. Okay. Yes, sir. Do we, need a, do, we, do we need a motion for that? Is it just acceptable to do it? Yes, sir. Just acceptable to do okay. it. You are the um, most qualified representative of the district for that purpose. Okay, no more discussion on that. Yeah, I just need direction on that. So you look, I'll, I'll look, look for a stack of PDFs coming your way. Okay. So, all right. And then those are all public records. So once you sign them and the property owners that signed them, then they go into the public records uh, of the hands they, of the secretary. They'll be kept in our archives as well as yes. Chris's. Is, Chris will get a copy of that yes. as well. And then we'll take responsibility for getting Sign copy back to the applicant. Yes. So they're going to have those. Okay. Um, the, another issue that had come up with respects to uh, right of way uh, work within the right of way, and that was uh, mailbox permitting. The best of my discovery, uh, we've not permitted right, uh, mailboxes in the past. 
but we do rely on the post office FDOT guidelines, which are consistent with the U.S. Uh, Postal Service's guidelines. And as long as a mailbox is installed in accordance with those guidelines, it'll be fine in the district. There was one question concerning mailboxes. Mm -hmm. Maybe we've gone too far too long, and maybe it's not uh, necessary any longer. But just as originally the decision was made about the mailboxes to clump them in groups of four, at, which would encompass the two properties across the street, so that the people who mow the lawns and things wouldn't have all these independent posts to have to go around every few feet. And here happens to be the person who cuts the grass. So I would wonder whether we should try to with uh, continue that as much as we can. I see there's some independent ones being moved today. Um, anybody have an opinion on that? That was actually uh, the postmasters um, when the HOA had taken it to the postmaster for the post for the mailboxes. That was a requirement that they had imposed at the time way back when. Okay. Whether they must have re relaxed their requirements um, at this since then, so that really wasn't a board decision yeah, yeah, or a requirement. Um, it was a HOA and a uh, postmaster no. decision. Okay, I don't know that we need to do anything with it. Then I was just of the opinion that would it cost us, the landowners, to maintain the property, and the longer it takes Tony to cut the grass, based on the fact that there's not four in a group, then. But if, if it's not an issue, and I, we do have some independent people here, um, anybody have an opinion? Real quick and short. Do you think we should group them, let them go as they are, or what? I like mine at the end of my driveway. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and, and the subject. Let's move on. And the last thing I've got is uh, Peter's continuing to work with uh, uh, FEMA. Mm -hmm. on the recovery, and he and I have had several conversations, and the process appears to be moving forward. So we do need to schedule some time in the field at uh, the board's convenience with Pete to go and look at the various areas of the projects mm -hmm. that are on that list. So, uh, with Pete or with Dale? I believe it would be good to, to first go with... Uh, uh, a representative from the board and Pete and myself. Okay. Um, let me, know in advance. Let, let, me just, let me fill in a couple blanks there. Okay. Uh, Dale and I, after the last meeting last Friday, right. you know, I was aware of that. We went out and we went totally around the district, mm -hmm. uh, primarily because we wanted to make sure that they were FEMA was on the same page with us. And by the way, I want everybody to know as I before I move along that Dale Cougar with FEMA who is our representative and, and is working for us to get us as much as we can, informed us at the last meeting, and I put all the attaboys on Peter for this, is that we are the number one first application with FEMA in the area. That's what he told us at the meeting. So I, I think that that's a, a good place to be. It, so uh, he said it's not going to help us end any sooner. But, uh, <laughs> but if it doesn't help us end any sooner, I hate to think we're all the rest of them are. So, but anyway, he said we were number one on the list, and uh, so that, that was a good thing. But I did take him, and we went around the entire district. I showed him everything we've been talking about so that he would know that we are eligible for the things we're asking for instead of waiting down the line to find out they come out later and take a look and say, what are you guys talking about? We don't see anything. So he went around and he approved everything we're doing. He's not the last person on the list, by the way. There's a whole lot of people and there's a point when he gets closed out. Were you done or did I just take over? No, no, no. Okay. You, you ran right from where I left. So. Okay. So um, anyway, um, there's a point when they close out this group of people that are working with us and they have no more computer, computer communications or anything once they submit their paperwork. And then I guess <coughs> the federal government part of FEMA takes over and based on what these people write is what they approve for us. So we will have no idea until we get down the way from that. Um, so we're done with the uh, 
Yeah. I guess the uh, engineer's report? Two. Yeah. Two. Okay. Yeah. Two. Uh, I want to ask you a quick on the procedure for, for the FEMA. Uh, so they, they have uh, at this point approved, they've, they've approved all, all the, the areas that you've shown, right? Pardon? They, they've approved, approved the work that you paid for the work? The work we have done is pre-approved. That's, that's in the back. Okay. Okay. So what, what we will get paid for is 100% of everything we completed by our deadline date on the 21st. Okay. Anything after that may be subjected to a 75% share, which we will only pay 25 And what, what is the anticipated upfront district cost before reimbursement? We've already paid that upfront cost of about $200,000 okay. at this point. Okay. okay. There, may, there may be more, and we're going to throw something else in here tonight, which is going to add to that. And some of the things we may throw in are not pre-approved. They are on the list we're asking for. Okay. But they are things that need to be done no matter how we cut sure. dots, okay? Thank you. Okay. So, chair's report. Oh, that's me. Okay. Um, again, I just went over the fact that we uh, uh, have been having the meetings every Friday with FEMA. I've participated in every one of those. They've run approximately four hours, give or take. Uh, and so that's being, we're moving forward with that as quickly as possible. Um, let's see here. I just want to wish you all a Merry Christmas <laughs> and a Happy New Year because we're not going to see you until next year. Well, we'll see you, but anyway. Um, I'm just making sure that the things I want to cover that before I go on be on the chair's report here. Um, the gates. That will be under FEMA. That will be done in new and old. And okay. Oh, oh, oh. Uh, we have a place on the on the agenda for the gates down there. If not, it can, it can it actually can, come under my report because it's, it's part of the FEMA thing. So we can go ahead and do that right now. And as we don't have an exact amount of money because prices have continued to change, we did have an estimated price at one time. Chris, do you know what that number it was? was? Approximately uh, 11700 Okay. Change. So give or take, and Mike has talked with the gate people today, and just so everybody knows before you get started, but... Uh, uh, Pelican Landing and uh, Benita, Bay. Benita Bay and a lot of the other subdivisions around us use exactly the same gate that we use from the same company. So apparently it's a good gate and we have no reason to want to go outside of that because of the parts and things that are readily available because of the usages of the other gates. So even if they're a little bit more money, I believe we should stay with them. And uh, let's see. Mike, why don't you take over and have a, sure. you had a couple of things there you wanted to talk about. I'm Mike Bradford and I've been trying to work on things around the neighborhood and on the gates. Uh, today, unfortunately, I didn't get a direct quote. These guys are so backed up, I was speaking to a company, New IQ, who works here on LiftMasters and a company called Action Door and Gates. And uh, New IQ was probably about three weeks out to even give me a quote. And Action was real busy. They were supposed to give me a quote today. But after I talked to him this evening, he gave me an approximate quote of 18000 And he said that's about where they're running now. And he'll fine tune that and hopefully it'll be less. But he said if we want something that'll cover what might be I'm not doing. And so, and Mike, our is that is that for New motors, new gears, everything new? New box, everything. everything. They're just all brand new. Everything else is Except for electrical connections, everything else is new. Correct. And, and that's labor to install as well? Correct. Okay. So that, that's an install price. And what's the warranty on that? Uh, that I don't know because he was going to send me a quote. And about 4.30 is my last conversation with him. Because he said, whoops, I can't get that to you today. And are these illuminated, these, the newer ones? They these are the illumi ones? Yes. illuminated. And, and our, our current boxes, by the way, are not only we're having problems with the gears, but also the current boxes are just broken up from time. I, when, when were they put in? They were put in when the road project was done. Yeah, so it's 2005, so it's 17 years old. Yeah, so, so, yeah, so they've lasted 17 years. 
and due to a few accidents, due to a couple hurricanes, they've just uh, deteriorated. Probably more costs to try and glue them back together. And by the way, everybody else had the same problems we have with gear boxes. They left their gates in the up position, and the wind just tortured them. Yep. So, and, but yeah, because I talked to the gentleman that manages Pelican Landing over there, and he's having the same. And he's replacing them for the same reason we're mm -hmm. replacing them. Here's a curious question. Are the frequencies going to be the same for everybody for their clickers, or we have to replace all the clickers? That we're going to have to work on, okay, because he said that there's a possibility that they might be able to to bring the, uh, integrate the old with the new, and if that's the case and they can do it, then it'll be the same. Otherwise, if not, we got to ship out a 500,000 new clickers. Yeah, well, they... We actually sell those. I know, but, I'm just but, but it wouldn't so, be fair. To, I mean, no, I don't what I was going to what I was going to suggest was that maybe if we, I mean, we already have to do the gates, and that yeah. burden uh, is going to be borne yeah. by FEMA, hopefully, but it may yeah. be borne by the taxpayers yeah. here. Uh, but if we have to do that, I would suggest we do it at minimal cost to the people yeah. for the replacements. And, and with that in mind, if FEMA is involved, and if we can get it with FEMA, obviously. Why not? But but otherwise, I wouldn't be overly concerned about the clickers now. He sounded reasonably comfortable that he could. That was off. that was action door. That was action door. So they could reprogram the right frequency of the current clickers. Uh, yeah, it's not a matter of reprogramming. It's actually using the same current, chip, same as Yeah, some a chip that's in there that does that. And then we'll just we'll just have to wait and see. Right now, it's it's up in the air to see where that goes. John, okay, what, what you, you might not know uh, because of your newness to the board is we, we have been buying the clickers from Action Door and they have been programming them for years. So that's why if we go with Action Door, we might not have an issue with the clickers. Okay. Depending Sounds on the like technology, if the technology of the new boards are so high, so much better, more improved since the old boards, then, the, then they, I don't know if they, you know. Yeah, that's what he said. He he was he mentioned that, and he said until he gets out and looks at them, he won't know. But he's already looked at them once. And he's already told us that the yeah. old boards, right after the storm, were bad and needed replacing. Yeah. So we that's when we and that's right. when we started, and we, that's when we got the original quote way back in October, early October, right. for replacement of of the entire units, which. Was quite a bit less than what he was quoting right. here. Is that so from eleven thousand eight hundred to eighteen thousand now? Well, no, he's probably he was well, ballparking it. Yeah, he has not been out. And this gentleman, by the way, we were speaking. Uh, Chris and I were speaking to to the guy that works on them. And this is a but we did, but we did get a quote. We did yeah, get a quote. Yeah, we got a quote from him. So that's yeah. Why. But okay. this is the gentleman that uh, he he's not familiar with our system, and he hasn't been out here to see it. But in last minute, I was frustrated because I thought he would send me a quote, and instead he calls me at the last minute, and tells me about eighteen thousand to be sure what it would cover. So, and he's taking in mind that we need a, a cost so that we can actually start to order or start to do something with it, uh, because again, these these are all we're talking uh, first part of March for an installation unless he gets oh, wow. an opening. Yeah, so anyway, direct your questions to the board. I have a question. Okay. When he gives us a price on this lift gate system, can we make sh get a quick chance before he orders it and we commit to it? Can we find out which opener he's using? Yeah, we, we will definitely do that. I'll, and I'll be working. I mean, I, as soon as you gave me that price, I've been thumbing through commercial gates and openers. Mm -hmm. And I'm seeing anywhere from 2000 to 4500 for the whole system. Mm -hmm. Why? The whole piece. And I don't know if I'm just looking at the wrong stuff or... No, you're, you've got two pieces, one on the left side, one on the right side. Okay, and then, well, then, this is then, only one side. And then we're looking at the lighted systems, not just the bare system. So it's like buying a car and wanting the radio and wanting I, the heater. I understand right. that. So, I mean, I think that... You know, and they're talking eighteen thousand dollars, and I'm seeing this thing on here for three thousand dollars. Well, what Mike said, and I did speak with him earlier, was that was a hypothetical number. The guy was reaching for the stars to make sure when we came to the board meeting tonight mm -hmm. uh, that we would probably cover that amount so we could move forward. It doesn't mean we're going to spend. 
No, I, I, I understand okay. that, but I, I think that we need to at least have some way to hold people in check. And that's what we, we will do that. I'll reassure you on that. Okay. You can hold me accountable. As a matter of fact, I'm thinking, I've bought, I've bought garage doors from LiftMaster and from uh, Action Doors. And I've also bought them from Amar out of Tampa. Mm -hmm. And I know them. I know well, maybe you can maybe you can as part of the committee help Mike work on this. Yeah. You know, also just to not interrupt you. I'm not saying Mike's doing anything wrong either. I didn't mean it that no, way. No, no, it's not not like knowledge it. knowledge is Yeah, and, and and rightly so. But also in this uh, the uh, for the access to emergency vehicles. Uh, now I only looked that up in a couple locations, that part and that part was twenty three hundred dollars. I know, and, and that's that's what all of the really stuff. Yeah, has. yeah. Mm -hmm. you don't get to buy just a basic system. You have to have the emergency vehicle access and everything. That's why I said this isn't, you know, Ed. We really appreciate what he's doing because we need all the help in the world, and that's what we're asking for. I'm just trying to make it. You, I didn't know when you were talking about horror and these things. I'm just because I know there's complete difference between commercial and my game. Right. You know what I mean. Because one has to work 5,000 times a day and one works three times a day. You get so many cycles out of it before it breaks. Da, 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 da. Okay. Okay, so. We um, need to move. Jim? Yes, ma'am. Why don't I send the quote that we have received to Mike tonight so that he can forward it to the gentleman he's talking to because that gentleman may not have accessed our file at the time and know that we have an existing quote. Is that quote. quote got specifications in it? It has some, some it wasn't a lot of detail. It wasn't a lot of detail. That's fine if you would make sure I get a copy of it also. I appreciate yeah. it. So here's, here's, we, okay, here's where we're at, gentlemen, is that the gates are broken on the back. We're getting a lot of additional traffic. We're in the winter time. Uh, the money is going to be spent out of our emergency program as we had already agreed upon for the hurricane. And we do expect that FEMA will refund us the money for it. I'm going to ask the board tonight to approve the expenditure, which we really don't have to do because we already did it. But I, I think at this expense, we need to bring the board needs to all participate. So I'm going to ask the board to approve us purchasing the gates and moving forward with that project. Make a motion to approve the purchasing of the gates. Is Can that be done in the chair's report, or we do we need to wait? We're a little early. Okay. Uh, if we could do it, yes, sir. If we okay. can add it to the agenda. Well, we have. It's part of the FEMA. Discussion. It is okay. So it's it'll be right there in the FEMA discussion. Okay. We can do it right there. So that'll be perfect. While we're still having the chair's report. <clears throat> okay. So John has a, has made a motion. No, we yeah, we're gonna wait. We're gonna wait, wait until we wait. get down to the theater yes. report. But I won't hold my breath until we get to it. Please okay. do not, sir. Okay. John had mentioned once before that he would like to see the <coughs> wooden fences put back up, and as I agree with him, there are certain things in our community we would like to see as community projects, and we'd like people to volunteer to help out. So uh, we do have all the wood to do that and the posts. No? Are we talking well, about the fence? Yeah, yeah. By, the, by the retention funds in the front. Yeah, we don't have yeah. So yeah. we would just like to have some volunteers. We don't have any. We, we have some of the wood. There's nowhere near enough. We'll see. Money. We'll see how far it goes and what we need. We'll buy. Okay. I already told them I'll help. So you got me. So. Okay. Are we allowed to change that landscape at the sign to San Carlos Estates? Because Tony, we had we originally put the plants out of there, but then would you guys like to take care of that and maintain it? Yes. Then you may do that as far as I'm concerned. Would the board approve them maintaining, taking care of and maintaining the plants around the front side? The very beginning, right after you cross the railroad tracks yes. on the right. They're, they're, doing they're, doing it, they're doing it as a volunteer thing, so. Yes. 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 May, yes. Please. Yeah, I hear. Okay. Okay. Come April will be redone. Okay. All right. Um, I wanted to just touch base on, we've been trying to get matching grant money, but since Hurricane Ian, it seems like our uh, officials in Tallahassee and with the South Florida Water Management District uh, are sort of stumbling and not being much help right now. Uh, I was supposed to be speaking in January uh, before the legislature to try to get money approved for matching grant money for this district. Right now, that seems to be, I don't know where I'm at on that slate. Okay, 
So I'm asking anybody who knows any of our legislators, anybody who knows the governor personally, not everybody's hands at one time, okay? And, uh, <laughs> but uh, anybody who can be helpful, letters to the governor, uh, writing them, and, and uh, you have this uh, uh, map I put up over here, and uh, Chris furnished Mr. Edenfield with that, and Mr. Edenfield furnished it to me, and there it sits. So, uh, with all due respect, I put it up there because it shows the boundary lines of our district. It shows that everything outside that ditch line is intrusions from other communities. Estero, State of Florida, Lee County, Bonita Springs, the railroad, and there are uh, the, the um, uh, cement plant. Uh, everything out there, I could walk over and show you, but I think you all can see the map. Everything on the outside of the dark line is intrusions that we're paying for in this community. Everybody seems to be in favor of the fact that we should be able to collect money from all of the outside agencies. I think that if we can get directly to the governor and we can compassionately get him to understand that we're taking on this burden, what's the total number of people in this community? The lots. We, I can tell you the acres. Uh, yeah, how many lots do we have? Do you know? I don't know. The number There's 1,054 acres. And yeah, that like was like 755. 900 and some lots. I lost track Seven, when, when they cut part of it off. So, um, anyway, somewhere between yeah. 800 and 1,000 lots. And this, this community <clears throat> should not have to take on the burden of maintaining this at the cost we're spending every year for cleaning of the ditches, and besides the fact that we're headed for a train wreck, there's going to be a day when that whole ditch system is going to have to be excavated and cleaned, and when that occurs, this community should not have to be burdened with that expense, and if we don't do something now, we will be, okay? So I'm just asking for everybody's help, and including the attorney and the, the engineer, if anybody knows, can write letters, knows anybody. I have a quick question. Is I-5, no, the local... Represent uh, representatives that go to Tallahassee State, not federal. No, I plan on reaching out to DeSantis about a couple of things, but I haven't really made it down that road yet. Okay. okay. Let us know to get any success. Yeah. Because it might be mutually beneficial. Okay. So. Okay. One other thing, and this is where I think we need help from. Again, I don't know any longer how to advertise for services that this community needs. Used to be, you could write a letter, or you could put an ad in a newspaper, everybody got it every morning, everybody looked at classifieds, and everybody knew what services were. How do you advertise for services today and get somebody to respond to you? We have, over the last two years that I've been on the board, we've had numerous things that we've tried to do, We've got no real result for it. And, I, and I'll tell you, a good, exa good example probably is even the engineer. We get one application, okay? I'm glad we got it. I don't think I would have wanted to trade him for anybody else, but the fact is, uh, that's not the way it should work. We should have an opportunity to interview people and get the best of the group. And so I don't know how to do that anymore. Doesn't the chamber have a list of trades? I've talked to them today about it, and Don's been working on that. He's going to get back with me. They normally only use, give you information on chamber members, okay? They pay the bills here. Right. So that's what you can expect from the chamber. But Don said she would speak to the city of Bonita and see how she can help us out. So I am reaching out to other people. You're just part of the reach, okay? So I'm going to, I'm asking you all for your help there, and my number is on our web page. You guys can contact me anytime. Oh, okay. One other issue that I'd like to talk about, and that's the surrounding gates around the community, because we've talked about it before, and I think I can still come into the church report on that. I think that even though no decision to be made at this moment. Um, We've continuously tried to clean around the outside <coughs> edges and give people walking access around the community. I think it's time now that the board needs to make a further decision on how we're going to proceed forward. Whether we modify gates, whether we take the locks off and put on clips like you put on dog collars or whatever, 
so that they'll hold the gates in the closed position, but a, a person who's walking or passing by can stop, unhook it, move by it, hook it back up. Now, there's no guarantee they'll rehook it, but at least they can pass by it. I think we're at a bigger risk causing people to have to go around the outsides on stones and dangerous areas when we talk about people being possibly injured. And I think that if we don't provide for that, then the <coughs> court could be held liable for causing people to have to do that. Well, I think the traffic barrier should stay, yeah. but have accessibility. Okay, what do you mean traffic because barriers? Should stay? The traffic barriers that exist there now? The gates. They're, yeah, they're, well, they're not really gates. They're more okay. like barriers. They're for No gates. They're for, okay. The, the, the barriers for that, they're at the uh, fire hydrants. Okay. So what well, would you suggest? Are, I think they should stay, but like you said, be modified to make sure that there's feasible, safe passage. Because some of them, you can't, people put up barbed wire, they put up sticker yeah. bushes, they put up thorns. That's what, I, that's what we had in the budget was to, to do a, a cleanup of the gates. We did. Two feet, uh, no, we haven't done that. We haven't gone no, from the inside no, of the gate. No, no, I meant we put it in the budget. Yeah, yeah. To, and done it for two feet to clear, clear all that. But some of, all, all, some of the places we go around, especially on Bonita Bill, mm -hmm. there's a few of those properties that have pretty much put up their fences and made it you know, almost an impossibility to do that. So my suggestion being is that an easier, cheaper way to do it would be to get rid of the locks and put hand-operated uh, locking catches or mechanisms on those, allowing people to pass through and the only reason I bring this up and is personally, oh, oh, that's okay. No, just reason I bring it up is like traffic on Golden Eagle has gotten substantially huh. ridiculous, uh -huh. and uh, people are going to the end, turning around and coming back, and right. turning around, and coming back. My concern is now if you make it accessible, they're just going to drive around, and now we're going to have an issue of repairing the roads that are not. Yeah, we're not talking passable. about making them accessible to cars in any way. No, I know, but like if people can just unlatch it, they're going to drive their car unlatching. I don't think they'll get out of their car and go do that. They they might, oh, but I, mm -hmm. I I don't think you're going to see. They might. You're going to see more traffic. No, on we the can side always of. we can always put the locks back on. Yeah. You know, nobody's talking about getting rid of them. I know that when I travel around the outside of our community to inspect and look at things. I get really tired of these paddles. Yeah, I know, yeah. You know, and, and I would much rather be able to just pass through easier. If but, there's a feasible pass through, cleaned up, like you said, not mm -hmm. blocked. Up. My concern would be people lifting those gates because they're heavy. L lifting which no, gates? They don't lift. Yeah, they just like that. Oh, they swing out. Yeah, we don't have they're any gates swingers. to lift. Right, you still, they're heavy. <laughs> <laughs> some, some of them aren't. What it, who she's referring to? I, I've adjusted a couple of them. Is there's a cable that holds them up. Right. When that cable drops down, then when they come off that lift, you have they to pick them up. up. So oh, okay. that, can, oh, yeah. that can be adjusted mm -hmm. and be in that. And and actually, Golden Eagle, someone went down there and put a for sale sign up on their house, and a lot of people are going down there to see that. I'm just messing with you. <laughs> <laughs> That's the only reason I bring it up, though. <laughs> that, 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 was, that wouldn't be your parents' no, house. No, <laughs> Bike, talk to me. <laughs> that was good, Mike. That was we good gotta one. give you that one. But no, I'm just honestly like noticing it from I never noticed like from their perspective. You know, like I'm at the beginning, so I just see it like I get more mad I'm driving at eighty miles an hour. Yeah. But like there is just a tremendous amount of traffic that goes down, turns around and goes out, down, yeah. turns around, go out. I'm like and it's, okay. Yeah. Okay. So I'd like to see us make a decision on that sometime in the near future, mm -hmm. no later than January's meeting. Okay. I just think that basically the decision made is to just clean them up and make them passable with like the the width of a golf cart. I would agree with you there. I don't know that you can do that because I don't think we have the space for a width of that's, a that golf that's, cart. That's why on I was some of them, yeah, on a lot of them. I mean, they, Bill. because when they were installed there, according to Judy at a pre prior meeting, she said they only allow twenty four inches on the inside of the gate. So you're not going to be able to get a golf cart through there. Right. Yeah. Okay. But some people have put chain link fences right. and things right up to the gate mm -hmm. post. So therefore, even in our what we've suggested about cleaning, then maybe we ought to modify those gates by four feet or three feet or whatever we think to allow for people to pass through without having to open them and close them. And that keeps them in the closed position locked. I'm okay with that. We could change the locking mechanism as long as we can pass through without having to have people stepping on the embankment and on rocks 
and or get caught up in somebody's barbed wire they threw between the post and their fence. Mm -hmm. And that's what the issue is. Bonita Bill is notorious for that. The other side, we have the good side of the subdivision, and our people don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> I guess it's because we have Amarillo and people like to ride yeah. their bikes down there. <laughs> okay, I've got one other thing I'd like to bring up while I still have the floor. And that, and because I, it's not on the agenda, but I, if I can add it to the agenda, I would like to do that. Can I add something to the agenda this way? Yes, sir. Okay, I would like to, the cleaning of the culvert pipes. And then I'll not talk till we get to that. Okay. Okay, I'm done. Uh, do you need a motion to add? Treasurer's report. Plan a motion. motion. Motion to, to add motion to add that item. Motion to add. I motion to add. I make a motion to add the cleaning of the culvert pipes. To the agenda, I second it. Or first. Aye. Aye. Motion carries. And Mr. Chairman, just to clarify. So next month on the agenda will be the, the discussion of the perimeter road gates, modifying them or whatever we yes. need to do to make them okay. all accessible. So we'll put that on the agenda so that it can be discussed and the action can be taken on it. That Thank time. you. Yes, sir. Okay, treasurer's report. All right, we did get some uh, revenues in November and December. We're starting to see that now. And what the county is doing is they are paying, like on November 30th, I got monies that were received from prior to November 10th. And then on 12-15, I've got money from November 10th to 12-10. So that's the, kind of their cutoff. So this month, we, we have a total received so far for general maintenance of $198,058. And our, um, I'm sorry, that's the uh, CIP. Our general maintenance is $194,607. So we are two-fifths of the way to our total gross revenues at this point. We'll probably see another big chunk come up at the next distribution when most of the December receipts are paid because the county extended the uh, discount through the month of December. Um, we have right now, we have total income year to date of $402,969. We have total expenditures year to date of $285,262. The, um, we have spent, we have 31000 left of the $200,000 that we took out of the Florida Prime account. Um, for the expenses related to Hurricane Okay, Ian. so you're including that uh, not as a separate item? Shouldn't we be taking the hurricane stuff totally separate from our normal budget? Stuff? Well, if we, I'm listing it as in the description. We don't have it as a separate line item category. Okay. Yeah, I, I, and I have a, a recapitation. Yeah, it, do, it makes it look like we're spending all of our budget money already. <laughs> and no, I agree. That's why we have a separate. I have a separate report for you on that. I provided you. Okay. All right. Um, I'm good with that, Chris. Here's the separate report. Okay. Thank so you. we are tracking it, and we're tracking it by the date it was paid, by the check, and by the vendor, um, and the dollar amount. So of that two hundred thousand, we have thirty one thousand one hundred forty eight dollars. Left doesn't mean we can't get more if we need it. You mean out of our prime account? Out of whatever account you want to take. Yeah, I, I understand that. I just, I just wanted to. When people are here at the board meeting, I, I just was, wanted I was to, going to reference. That's why I, I, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm that sorry. Up. My apologies. So, does anybody have any questions about that? No. So when you look at the variance, you're right, Jim. It looks like we're way overspending, but we're really not. Okay. Okay. So it's all going to kind of wash out. And if you all would like, I could, because I'm, I bring this in, this is from the actual budget that we have. Mm -hmm. And so when we get to, at some point, probably when we get our carry forward balance, fund balance amendment, mm -hmm. we can at that point do a budget amendment to include or change the dollars to include the repairs for the hurricane. I don't know that they need to be <coughs> as a separate line item in the budget, or I or or it, I mean, it's part of we change the dollar amounts for the budget for the different categories. So I think that one thing you could do is 
you could, I'm just sitting here thinking about this while you're discussing it, I think you, you could modify the budget categories if you know you're going to receive a large sum of money from FEMA, would you want to have a separate revenue line item for FEMA uh, reimbursement and then have a, an additional expense item for uh, Hurricane Ian expenditures so that you separate it out on both mm -hmm. the income and the expense side of the budget? So that's completely separated from your other operating revenue and, and, and activities? Would you want to do that? You know, if you don't mind me saying something at that point, what I'd like to see is a separate category just so that it shows the money that we put, moved over to there to begin with. Then as we spent that money, it shows it being diminished to the point that it either gets to zero or we get reimbursed from FEMA. I don't and think that's, and that's what this is. I don't think you're ever going to see a big check from FEMA. I think what you're going to see is FEMA will cover our expenses, writing checks back to us. Hopefully, at the end of all of this, we end up with a zero, showing that they covered all of our expenses and the money goes back into the account where it came from. I think for audit purposes, the auditor is going to want to see, or is going to want to understand that FEMA reimbursement as a revenue item, and then is going to also want to understand those expenses because they are substantial expenses. I think the auditor is going to want to understand them, especially since they are reimbursable expenses, as a separate line item. I can make them as subcategories of of the different major mm -hmm. categories right. for the expense side. To put it on the revenue, we're not going to see that money probably for eighteen months. So it's my suggestion is to make separate categories of the income. Statement where your expenses because you've already got it here 168 yeah. 851. So, do an income expense subcategory of the income statement on our financials, and then you can show drawing over the revenue source where it came from. You can tie it back to the balance sheet from the, the, uh, the main account, and then here's the subcategory. And these numbers will always balance out to the 200,000. Yeah, but at over. some point, we're not going to get 100%. 100%, so it's and all pie in the sky. I'd rather do the accounting than find out in the end of the 200 we spent, we get 192 back. So there's an $8,000 deficit, then you can trace it. Mm -hmm. Right now, we're not gonna be able to trace it. This document here doesn't tie back to the financial statements. You're doing it, but I need to see it in, in the financials. Does that make sense? They do in QuickBooks, but yeah, and they do on your check detail. But Okay. Yeah, right. I can, let me do the subcategories and then do you want? We can't show that two hundred thousand as an income item at, because it's a bank tra funds trans transfer. Right. So but the balance sheet will still balance out if you move the two hundred from the balance sheet to a subcategory to the financial. <coughs> QuickBook can't do it. I'll do it in Excel for you, and then you can attach it to the QuickBooks. I know, I know it'll work. You start out a pot of money. Yeah. How you divvy it up, the same pot's got to come up in the end and balance out. I don't want to over, yeah. I don't disagree. I just don't want to overstate the income. The revenue. I don't want to overstate the revenue that hasn't come in yet. Unless we note it as a receivable. If we note it as a receivable, female That's receivable, fine. then I think we can. And then you could do accrued expenses versus, yeah. You and I, mean, I can talk offline. I, I know what you're trying to do. Okay. okay. That's fine. All right, so that's kind of where we are. Are there any questions? Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay, what's the way of the attorney's uh, Yes, sir. There are a number of items under old, new, and unfinished business that I have comment on. Um, policies and procedures, 8991 strike lane, um, the agenda format, all of those things I have comment on. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I can make those comments when the items come up um, on your agenda uh, so that I don't say it now and then hope okay. everybody If we can keep from doubling it, absolutely. Let's, let's do it like that. That was my okay. Call. Okay. Yes, sir. So I'll save my comments until those items come up, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Please, 30 seconds. Not bad. 
I'm trying. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to get kicked out. <laughs> I'm bad, but that's a record for you. <laughs> okay, uh, comments, and, and uh, I thought this was put down to about seven. This was split. We couldn't change the agenda until we have the uh, discussion and we have a board <coughs> approval to change the agenda. Okay. So, 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 Mr. Chairman, so let me clarify. That's one of the things that's going to come up under your policies and procedures. There's going to be a section in that policies and procedures manual that's going to address your, your meeting format, how that's okay. going to work. And, and that's going to include what, what the law currently requires is you have to receive public input on agenda items before you take action on those agenda items. Okay. So what our thought was, and I discussed this uh, a little bit with, with Supervisor Salucci, is to have a public input section on agenda items only. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it has to relate to something in, in uh, your old new and unfinished business and let that public input occur, put a three minute time limit on it per person and at the discretion of the, of the board chair, because that's part of your job is to, is to manage the board meeting and the proceedings. And so that would still be both present, but it would be modified from its current form. Okay, ma'am, may I only ask for one thing then, okay? Because we haven't approved that as of yet, and my understanding is we may not do that this evening, but probably in the January meeting. Yes. I don't know how it's going to go. We'll see how it works. But if, if, in fact, we don't approve that tonight, can we, as the board members, vote to move this seven to the bottom? Well, you still, you still need public input on these. What I would suggest that you do is say, and you can do this right now, call for public input on any of the business agenda items. Because okay. the state law requires you to take that public input on the business agenda items only. Okay. So if you call for that public input, that should be pretty short and sweet based upon who is here this evening. <laughs> Anybody who says anything will ask you to leave. Well, I think I find presentation to be part of that public input. Well, yes, sir, it can be, or you, you can, can have, have him present up when the, the item is coming up on the agenda, too. Either way. Well, so, if you call for public input, you may call for it, and it may be none, and then we can keep moving. That was a high so note. By the state. So, so call for public input. Public input? Thank you. That's it. Wait, yes. I'm afraid to speak. <laughs> <laughs> we need to tell you, the chairs are electrified. Okay. Okay. <laughs> We're, 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 at, we're, at, we're going to try to keep moving here because we do have a time to be out okay, of here. So All the new business. Hold on. Wait a minute. I have a question. If there is no public input on the agenda items right now because we just called for it, can the public speak when we get to the agenda items? At the discretion of the board chair. Okay. Okay. To make sure that that's Okay. Clear. New and old and unfinished business. <clears throat> Europe. Fiber. Yeah. No, go ahead. I will be able to be able to talk. Just you give us your name and come here. Oh, My name is David Chase. I'm Chief Operating Officer for Hurley Cable Construction, PCI Group, High Five Fiber, Pro Design Engineering. I actually brought more cards this time, so everybody can take one that wants one. And all the companies that we have are on the back of them. Um, so we're an in-house construction engineering and internet service provider. We have another internet service provider company in Telstar. It's called Telstar. It's in Illinois. Um, so we've been doing this for 30 years now. And up there we do trip and play services, so TV, phone, internet down here. We only do internet because TV is slowly dying. It's just too expensive to operate nowadays. So we just wanted to be the best internet guys in town. We are building the entire city of Benita Springs. Um, so building your area is a part of what we are going to be working to design and, and get completed. What percentage are you done in Benita Springs in general so far? About 15%. Um, we're starting in another 1,000 homes starting in January. Um, and we're just finishing up another 300 that we added to our footprint. So I think in total there are 
9,400 and some change homes that we can build out to that aren't in formal HOAs that have gates. Uh, those are generally all signed contract deals with some hotwire, whoever else, and we're standard residential, just home crossing network. So if you want it, you take it. You don't want it, you don't have to take it. No one's going to make you. Um, we do do HOA deals as well, but I mean, your area wouldn't really fall into that anyways. Um, we basically saw that all the companies were going for the larger HOAs and getting these single one pays and then nobody in town was getting any benefit from it because, you know, to them, either the whole city signs up or they won't build it. Um, so that's not how we do it. We just build on our own. The owner of the company actually lives in Naples, so he's local as well. Uh, we do all of our own work, so I'm actually state certified for underground utility construction and excavation. Um, and we have done underground construction in about 40 different states. Um, we also have a branch in Kentucky. Uh, formerly have branches in Texas and California. Um, but now we are here. So I brought some kind of smaller little snippet map areas just so you can see kind of a, a detail of a footprint that we would put in, which is kind of why we're here, which is to uh, basically be able to get permission to use the right of way easements. Uh, this is also a larger map, and I've sent digital maps to both John and Chris. Um, so there are digital copies that can be emailed out or reviewed further because the detail on that map, such as such a, a large area, is very tough to see. Um, but it gives you a general idea of what we would be looking to do as far as uh, use of the easements to be able to build out to all the homes in the area. So when we build an area, whether there's a house on a lot or not, if there is a lot that would allow for a home at some point in time, we still build on it and work out to it. Um, which is, I think, from a lot of the calls we've got, already an issue from whenever Comcast came in and built, or even CenturyLink in some areas where there's only five houses on the street, so they built the fifth house, and then that was it, and the lines don't go any further, and they want you to pay, and they take mm -hmm. the rest of the way. Mm -hmm. We built every lot no matter what. If there's somebody there, not there, it doesn't matter, we put service to it. Um, the system could also, if you have any monitor facilities for the water district, we could also plan to put lines out to all those areas. Um, so one of the reasons I sent the map over, I know where we were planning to come up, Cockle Shell, I think there is kind of a land bridge here and another one further up the way, which we would actually potentially try to use to get in. But, mm -hmm. you know, we'd have to have our engineers work with your engineers uh, to figure out where, you know, potential issue areas are going to be and what you think the best plan of attack is. I mean, we could go 100 feet under a bed or we can try and cross on top, we could put in poles and go area. It's just a matter of what you guys will approve there, but I will say we don't like to do anything aerial. Uh, our system's 100% underground. Yeah, we're underground people, so. Yeah, during the hurricane, our system went out for six hours because our battery backups completely ran out from being out of power for so long. Uh, nobody wanted to go out in the hurricane to turn on the generators, <laughs> so. Everyone was out of power, and uh, we came back on before the power came on, and that's really the only outage we've had in the three years that we've been here. Um, so the timing of when we brought approval, I mean, we want to get approval to at least uh, be able to access them and, and get the details of what you guys would need from us as soon as possible, because until we're sure that we can make it work um, and work together, it's not really useful for us to put a lot of resources into building out a full design in the area and uh, you know really committing money and resources to it um, and same thing we're with the start date when we could build it potentially I could build this entire area anywhere from three to six months depending on how many crews we put on it uh, area like this I usually don't like to put a ton of crews on there because we're jamming up roads and making people angry we like to make people upset one street at a time and <laughs> it's a little bit easier to manage that way. If I've got nine machines all up and down strike lane, it's just going to be a nightmare for everybody. Is this something that if we elected that we wanted to let you put that out here, that you would be going to move forward within this next year on? Potentially. Um, it's also going to be based kind of, it, as it stands right now for us to build this area, we kind of had it last on our build list just because the homes are so far apart. But there are resources that you guys potentially can help us out with on that end as well. Uh, the RUS program, uh, they're putting out, I can't even remember, $90 billion over the next 10 years through 
the RDOF program. Um, is that the remote uh, access for people get on the internet? The R, what is that one? RDOF is the rural. Rural, that meant rural, not remote. Rural. Yeah, and then R R RUS is the rural utility service. And um, RDOF, rural development of. I can't remember what it is. I, there's so many of them. There's like 12 different programs, but those are the... Does it help that our area is zoned agriculture, so it appears to be rural, even though we are two miles from downtown Benita? Potentially. The thing that helps the most is areas where Comcast hasn't built completely down the streets, because mm -hmm. uh, where they focus most of their money are places that have bad service, body service, or no service at all. So the more I, I lots hear. that are here, yes. even if there's not a house on the lot, the fact that there's nothing there to serve it that did get a house, that's the kind of stuff that hits big with them where they want to make sure that there's a fiber line to every lot on every street, everywhere, no matter what. That's basically the whole point of the program they're putting out. Dave, do you ever do an assessment of what percentage is not built out versus built out from Comcast and CenturyLink? Like, is one-third of St. Cause Estates has nothing, or 50%, or 25%, I'm just curious. I haven't driven all the streets before, um, and I know at some point, man, I wanna say, back here in Mullane, I know they only go halfway down the road, the further back you get, the more spotty it is. I could pretty easily just literally drive down the street and look yeah. at the poles and one, th there. one thing you have to count is all the little pink stakes. The survey stakes are up almost every place, it seems like, anymore. Our build out is imminent within the next few years, probably. So oh, yeah. I, I don't think by the time you finish this project, so you're, a lot of you're, you're not going to be looking at too many dead end places. And I guess with, with what you've asked me, I've got two questions that I want to ask. Number one for the attorney and one for the engineers. We're sitting here. What might we have to deal with if we chose to let them use our easements for putting in the fiber optics. Is that going to be an issue or is it something this board votes for and says it's okay to do? In terms of using the easement, the, the district's the, right, the district's of, right, way, right of way, board decision here, there is an agreement I prepared, a, a kind of a standard uh, use agreement that is similar to the use agreement that Mr. Edenfield referred to earlier for the property, the individual property owners. This other use agreement is designed for uh, for utilities people, uh, companies. To so therefore, it's already in place. I've we don't have to go a through a long, drawn out month after month thing. I've worked on a lot of that. Yes, <clears throat> okay. there still may be some give and take and modification, but the base agreement uh, I worked on a bit ago. Okay, Mr. Edenfield. Yes. From your point of view, do we have any issues of... I would just ask a question. You say you, uh, you would prefer not to go there. But, uh, is it open trench or directional drill? What's your... We usually use a mixture of uh, directional drill and missling, mm -hmm. like pneumatic missiles. Mm -hmm. So we use that. Directional drills usually run like at the Premier 2440 or 2022, something like that. Mm -hmm. It really depends you know, if we're doing a street crossing or... Run down the road. So the answer there is not open trench. Yeah, no, I, I I hate open trench so much. It's <laughs> so, so do we. <laughs> yeah, with open trench, I mean you, it's never going to look the same after restored. If somebody does have nice grass going through, mm -hmm. it doesn't matter if you resod it; it's just going to be a nightmare. So directional drill, you know, we can cut out a piece of sod and maybe locate. Which here everything's pretty much aerial. Um, so we would also probably need at that point some type of homeowner input, which we generally. Uh, tag all the doors a week before construction, send out two construction notices in the mail uh, four weeks and two weeks prior to construction. Um, but I'm sure everybody will get more involved once they start seeing it and hearing about it. We have a number you can call 24 hours a day with issues or you know, if you have a dog fence, special sprinkler systems that you put in, anything you have buried in the, in the yard, as long as you know about it, it's not a problem. Okay, for what we think is issue around here is gonna be dealing with all the septic fields, the leach fields. Well, some people are in front of the house, some people are on the side, mm -hmm. when you're born, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you just got to work with the homeowner on that. Where is it? Yeah. Or look at the plans. Everybody should have their plans. A lot of the houses house. here are set back pretty far, so I think for the most part, we shouldn't have too much issue we with that. driveways. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, even going to the driveways if we have to. So, Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. It, so, just to clarify, what you are talking about, and I think what the board would approve, would be an easement uh, 
a non-exclusive easement within the district's right of way. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If you do, if if you enter into that right of way use agreement in that form of a non-exclusive easement, then the easements that are also a part of the subdivision plat within the boundaries of each parcel would not be used except to access the structures themselves. Right. Mm -hmm. So you wouldn't have to enter into, as an example, onto the property and, and get permission from each property. No, that's not, the, that's not up to us. That's up no, to sir, that's absolutely. But, but you avoid all of that if, you, if this board agrees to allow them to run their line in your right-of-way. You avoid all of those problems. Okay, that's, what we, that's all we would be allowed. Yes, Okay, then I have one question for you. When we don't own the power line easements that are out here, so I assume you have agreements with them for the uses. I mean, Cablevision has tunneled in some of those. I don't know whether you would have any. Matter of fact, you may have no reason to use them. If you're going to follow ours, then every road out here gives you access. Yeah, we're so. generally, we stick to the front. I don't really like to do the rears. It's then if you do have people with fences and locked up gates and everything else, okay. it's a lot more difficult. But rear easements, the uh, FPL runs within, it's generally standard utility easement um, where anybody's allowed to go in there. If I use their poles, then I have to work with FPL. Otherwise, the front easement we use is usually 25 feet from the crown of the road, and then we have six feet from there, okay. uh, which just gets us just inside the ditch lines. Um, you know, it's basically right past the upper crown of the rear end of the ditch. Okay. Are, the you, next, oh, are you aware that one strike is a 30 inch force sewer main that runs down the entire length of strike lane? Did you know that? Oh, no, not, mm -hmm. not off out of the gate. So when you're coming out, all located, yeah, so if you come up Caucasus, which we talked about in Stillwell, make sure when you want to cross, you figure out where that is. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that yeah, crap, crappy deal if you don't. <laughs> um, anyway, one other question I have for you. I think this board would be more apt to move forward and approving things if we knew that your dates were more imminent and that you were excited about moving out here. I can work on that. That's what we want, that's what we want to know. But if you're talking two years out, then the board might wait two years. But Dave, let me ask you this question. Do you need, an, do you need something from the board tonight that's preliminary so that you can begin talking to the engineering firm, even if just an hour conversation, exchange some basics to make sure you do your assessment to give us a more defined time frame because right now you're working in the dark yeah well and like i said i mean really on this when it comes down to what else that we're building right now and then figuring out if we can get assistance from the government on funding in order to move it up in, in scale you know if we were able to get some additional funding from the government then we'd be able to put this on the docket for june of next year without that it just pushes it back until we we reach this point in our build cycle which could be another two or three years. I, I'm hoping it's not three years out. I want to be done building Benita by the end of two years. <laughs> Which isn't too tough. I mean, we, up in Illinois, we do about 500,000 feet a year uh, for a company called I3 Broadband. And we actually do a lot of the Summit Hot Wire builds and stuff like that down here as well. So Now, I just asked you the other the last week, a couple weeks ago, even though you're doing fiber optic for internet only, you have third-party services that people want to get TV still, internet streaming, and other stuff, you can get that through your backbone, right? Mm -hmm. Absolutely, yeah. Our internet works like any internet you have right now. It's nothing different uh, except for the way that we do it. Uh, one of the big differences about our internet compared to others like CenturyLink, Comcast, and anything like that, Comcast, if you sign up on their website, won't list their upload speed anywhere on the website because they don't want you to know what it is. Mm -hmm. So every time you say internet's slow, they go, oh, you just need more speed, you need more speed. The most upload Comcast can give you on their one gig package is 30. At 500 meg, they only give you 20, and anything below that, they give you 10. Our basic package is 100 meg. When you get 100 meg download, you get 100 meg upload. So when they keep getting you to get your speeds higher and higher and higher, your upload's not moving, so it's always going to feel slow because every device that you have is always uploading. Every cell phone, every Alexa, anything. It's always looking for updates, pushing for emails. That's where you're in it. feels slow right now. Um, so on our gig package, you have 1,000 download, 1,000 upload. Or Literally hundreds of times faster. And it's less money than Comcast. Yeah. Yeah, we'll try to ask the Bronx. Yeah. Just some little examples. We don't have a ton of packages. We only have one package that's not on here. It's our 100 meg service. And it is 
$39.99. We don't do promotional prices because we do pay for these builds 100% on our own for the most part. Um, and if there's 900 lots, call it 1,000. Generally takes us about $700 to cross the home, and that doesn't include if we do an install in the house. So we're looking at putting three quarters of a million dollars in building this area before we even hook up a customer. Okay. I hate to cut the short, but we are going to run out of time here, so we yeah. need to keep moving well, forward. Ask you a oh, go right ahead. Just a quick request that uh, if it pleases the board that they authorize uh, your engineer to coordinate and communicate with I-5 should they have questions that come up. I think that's fair enough. Make sure you get uh, Mr. Edenfield's card, mm -hmm. uh, direct all your questions and things through him. And, uh, okay. Hey, do we need to make a motion on that to authorize the engineering firm to talk with him? I don't think so. Or not. Want to make it official? You, it's, okay. it's the cleanest free. Yes, I make a motion that the engineering firm have the ability to do some preliminary discussions with I-5. Jennifer? I Second? I'll second it. All right. Aye. Motion carries. Thank you very much, David. The last thing that I'll leave you with, um, like I said, we're fully aerial. Fiber's not affected by weather. Electricity, water can flood, it can float. It doesn't matter. Pretty much just always works. Uh, you don't have issues with connectivity at certain times of day. If everybody's on in the morning, in the afternoon, they're working from home. You just have steady, consistent speeds. And on average, whenever you have a fiber network put into your community, uh, the prices of homes raise about 3.2%. Oh. So just having fiber will actually increase home values for everybody as well. Yep. Okay. You can do that easily, easily found. Or Again, okay. thank you very much. And thank, thank you. you. No more questions. One last question. Yeah, you're going to be in the bar. Cliff neighborhood. It's up the road a little bit. You want to know when you go to Briar Cliff. The, lot, the lots are much bigger and more fully are part yes. up there. So, yeah. Uh, <laughs> well, we're <laughs> yeah, we're working our way around the circle on uh, 41 right now, trying to get all the businesses there. So. Yeah. John, thank, you. Thank, thank you very much for bringing them here. Yep. Thanks, David. Okay. I'll leave these two just in case anybody wants to look at the low level design. There. Next on the list is the uh, contract for. Oh, let's see. I thought we had some new landscaping people we were looking at this year. No. <laughs> I can't even no. see Tony's face. <laughs> I don't tell you like... <laughs> <I'm just mine. laughs> so anyway, the it's contracts bad. for Gerald Street Service, which I, I I guess we're going to use that name for a while. I keep thinking we ought to be using our you know landscaping and stuff instead of generic names, but we know who we're talking about. So at any rate, uh, I noted that we did get an increased. Uh, Amount from Gerald's Tree Service on what he wanted for doing the January February work. Yes. Yeah. The downside to that for me is that there's a lot more lots been cleared out here since then, and we've had the hurricane, which has if we didn't actually physically trim anything, the hurricane trimmed a lot of things, and the limbs that were down have been picked up and cleaned. So to raise the rate on us right now doesn't seem practical to me when I think it should be a little bit less. Uh, every time they clear one of these lots out here, it's one less one he has to do, and yet the price goes up. It's you know, Tony, he has the same amount, doesn't matter whether the buildings get built or not, and his work increases, but Gerald's keeps getting less. Mm -hmm. So and I have I have a problem with it. I think what homeowners, I guess, built, put out there. Pardon? What home builders, what home by homeowners put on to the the I'm, I'm, I'm swale trying, line. Okay, what about the vegetation? Mm -hmm. you're, you're, but you're mo but no, what I'm saying is that when a lot gets cleared, that vegetation he used to trim is gone. Mm -hmm. Okay, and there's been a lot of building out here this year, and a lot of lots been cleared. So therefore, why does the price go up in the trimming of those berry bushes and things that used to overhang into the ditch system that are no longer there? Okay. Percentage wise, if I was a business and I wanted to tell you I need 10% more this year than last year but I lost 10% of the work that I'm going to have to do then if he stayed the same he'd be getting 10% mm -hmm. that's my problem are you talking to me or are you talking to I'm, the board? I'm talking in general <laughs> I, 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 I like to, you're talking to me I don't know no, 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 no but, 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 that's, but that is my opinion whereas 
Tony's ditches are all still there. Okay, so I, I did ask Tony before the meeting this evening because I've driven around and looked at the things that are actually hanging into the ditches and what he actually cuts are mostly, and I would I would venture 80 80 percent plus berry bushes. And Tony is in these ditches every week, and if his people can, before they grow to be three feet long, trim them when they're one foot long and add something to his bill, combining the two jobs into one. Uh, that may or may not work. It depends on what Tony wants to do. But I think that if we're not going to do that, we should bid that job out. I, I, we've talked to a lot of people this year in our subdivision, mm -hmm. a lot of services who have said they would like to do that work. And I don't see increasing the Price, like I said, when the job, the amount of work is going down, why are we increasing the rate? So you're talking about this part of the, the, his, his proposal? And the 35500 that Those are two but, different jobs. Yeah, they well, then explain them. Then, then because he didn't come here to explain them, can you do that? Well, <laughs> the, the 17000 is for the perimeter road tree trimming, which is what you're addressing. No, I'm, I'm addressing the... The, the, this is for the canal cleaning and the berm, berm work. Not the, not the water cleaning, but the berm, the, beneath all the perimeter roads. Right. What he normally does around the perimeter roads, which you've ridden with him and seen what he does. I have. And the trimming of the berms and going down into the berm, not spraying, but he, does not, he doesn't do anything inside the canal. Okay, so we've got one for cleaning the canals and one for cleaning the road the ways. roadway road beds. Yeah, this is done once a year. And the road beds are done once a year. Once a year, this is done. The canals are done twice a year. And the, which which ones the road beds? The that seventeen and thirty five. That's what I thought, but you you I thought you reversed them a moment ago. No, this is the canals. Here's a question: the, I have. The, Are we legally obligated in some contractual? Form with Gerald's right now. In no, the next we're month. not. Or we're in a month to month with Gerald, and you can say that you want to bid this out. I want to bid it out. I'll, I'll make a motion that we bid this out. out. And I think that Mr. Edenfield, I, I've been around with him, and I think we're in agreement that we've been on one side, we don't clean the far side of the canal, mm -hmm. and on this side over here, we do clean the far side of the canal. Mm -hmm. Why? Why do we pay on one on the south side to clean the properties on the other side of the canal, and on the north side we don't? It's like canal discrimination. So, well, I so, don't know. So, Come on, Chris, so, give us so, an so, so, You all set this up a long time ago. Okay, okay. but the, the point comes. The point comes back. The point comes back to the fact that we're paying this money that we probably don't have to pay when the growth. And, you know, lets the animals and the birds and the things live there that are being run out of other places today. So environmentally, I think we ought to leave it. So, so what, what you need to do then is determine the scope of the work that you want that's, done I would and like then to, prepare the bid I process. would like to work with Mr. Edenfield and determine what that scope is. Okay. And Mr. Unless Chair, one of the rest of you would like to do that. I have no... Is that Jennifer? Your point example? Yeah. For, yes. No, no. Yeah. Richard, no, perfect Richard. example about the pause procedure. What we talked about. Yes. Yes. This this subject right here, and the scope and committee and uh, yeah. and and Mr. Chairman, if I may, you have a standard. I've done the documents before the request for proposal yes, yes. document. Mm -hmm. So there's a standard document out there. <laughs> what you described was having the engineer assist with the better description of the scope of services, mm -hmm. a review and better description. Of we, we have discussed this in the past, but yes. the scope, from what I remember reading on it, still, if you took a look at our map over there, doesn't outline, and, and I believe that Mr. Edenfield does have the surveys now yes, of the roads and things, and mm -hmm. what I have noticed in the past, we have certain areas that mm -hmm. even on the perimeter roads don't get trimmed back to our property line. And, and it depends on it's it just there's certain areas that don't and yeah. I think that they all should be directly straight line cut and and a, and a waterfall hasn't been done in years well I agree with you there I think we have to decide what 
you know, what the real purpose of waterfall, how, how that, whether that changes what the flow of waters and stuff, it doesn't have a lot on it. And there's not a lot going on down there. I don't know why we need to spend a lot of money on it. So that, so that's in that scope of, of uh, services that, that you and the engineer would, would better describe. And then what Mr. Uh, Supervisor Salucci was talking about is when he and I were talking about the policies and procedures manual, one of the things that we discussed was the possibility of having, and, a, and I'm going to try to write it, to, to create an opportunity for the board to assign the first review of responses to a request for proposals like this to a committee for, for them to consider and to, to review and then to okay. uh, uh, possibly shortlist and, and give the board then some better indication from the community instead of having three board members maybe Doing expand to, to make that to decision, expand that to and, and able and involve more of the, of the landowners in sure. the review process. And for any, so for any of you who are here and you're paying attention in this uh, upcoming uh, policy, policy and procedure manual that we're creating is that we're going to ask community people to get involved and be on committees with one board member from from the board and when things like this come up you'll be the people who decide so we're hoping that we can have more participation from the community in decision making as to how your money's spent okay mm -hmm. supervisor salute and i will work at, at tightening that process up a little bit better than just this concept um, but and the other part is just to clarify i i it has been my practice for many, many years to make sure that in all cases, the final decision is made by the, the decision makers, the board. The board. Mm -hmm. uh, and, so, and so it would be an advisory uh, uh, process, of, an advisory type of a committee so that the final decision is still retained here. I don't ever want to give that away. I don't want no, to we're not going to give that away. Of doing but... anything that might uh, transfer any of that. Mm -hmm. Uh, authority and responsibility from the board to anyone else, but there's still a way to involve uh, the community in in that decision making process. Yeah. When I was so in the, when, I, when I was in the fire department, we we put all kind of committees together all the time, and as the chief, they would report back to me before we would have approval yeah. by the board. So that's the idea. That's the concept. Okay. So, but before you this evening is what do you want to do with the services currently being provided by Gerald's Tree Service, and it sounds like you want to do a request for proposals for that. We do. And that, and the engineer will need to write a better scope of services for that, but the base document is in hand, ready to go. Do you have a template for the RFP? Yes, sir. I do. If you could send us a copy of that, then we'll put together a draft scope and then get that to the committee for their review. And, and or at this point, because there's not a committee yet mm -hmm. created, uh, is it is it a it comes to it would come to the board? Okay. And would that be something that you would want us to try to get onto your agenda at your at your January board meeting? Would that be yes. something for you to approve? Yeah, absolutely. And then it would go up. But okay. I think um, my suggestion is the January meeting should be approval and adoption of. Improvements and modifications of the current policy procedures, which would include this refinement of scope, so that by January's meeting, the board has adopted improved policy procedures that will we keep amending as you know things come up for this. Yeah. But I think January should be an adoption of revised policy procedure for the board that will eventually be you know obviously to the public to see how the board runs the the. Uh, Operations for the district's benefit. Decision making. Yes. Process. Okay. Okay. So, Ron um, and the board, part of this, which we don't have in front of us, is the spraying component, which has been done in the past by Wesley Blankenship of ABC Lawn Care. And in the past, that gets done twice a year at a rate of, he's charged $3,000. So when you're doing your scope or your RFP, 
we need to include that spraying component as well. And they're spraying the swells or spraying the bushes? They're spraying the, um, my understanding is they're spraying into the water and the, the burn. Now, Mr. Brown can better explain that. Um, he, he is more directly involved with how that all comes about. But, but Gerald and Wes, they kind of mm -hmm. coordinate their, their, their work together. So my, what I will do is I will contact Gerald, I will contact Wesley and tell him, tell them that for now they're not to do anything, mm -hmm. that we are mm -hmm. getting an RFP put together and I'll get, make sure that you have Wesley's contact information. Okay. Thank you, ma'am. Okay, um, I would only say one thing to you, Tony. That's why it's important that vendors show up at our board members' especially board meetings, especially when their contracts are up, because this is what can happen, and there's nobody here to explain or to change or modify what he had asked for. I agree with you. Okay, so um, what are we doing with Tony's? All right, I sent you an email right before I came because I got it late last night, and I apologize, Tony. I didn't see it last night. I went to bed. Um, so you got an email, actually as I was driving to the meeting, Tony was asking for a 5% increase of his rate of $9,500 a month or the $114,000 a year. So do you want to discuss that, Tony? Uh, my wife grows up, uh, to be honest, I got more expensive than that. I'm gonna leave it to the board to decide the percentage, but Five percent, I feel is is low. She just go down and send it to you, and when I found out, I don't, I know that have raised in the last three years. Oops. Okay, uh, one th one thing that we had said to you, Tony, or I I said to you, and keep in mind that you do have an opportunity to bid on this next section. It's going to be open for bidding. With the par the part that we just. Denied. Okay. okay. So if your company feels like they can, especially the internal ditch systems along the swales of the roads, because you guys are your guys are there every week cutting anyway. So why they can't just it's like cutting somebody's lawn and trimming the bushes. You know, I know you do that. Yeah, I and, got and, to do it too. Pardon? I, got I know you do. It. So if we're not waiting for them to get into really big limbs and you're doing it on a regular basis yeah, yeah. and like, like I just pointed out a minute ago, every time they do a new lot out here and they grade off the properties, it's one less that we have to deal with. So um, next month, be prepared to come before the board and put in your offer if that's what you're going to do. Yeah, uh, I just want to say, Mr. Bradford, um, yes, ma'am. There's just a few homes that, like specifically on my own road on Catskill, the house on the corner, they planted those palm trees. Right underneath the power electric line. power line, but it's not just that. That's an issue. Also, the fact that it's are we talking about the, the ditch. are we talking about the very beginning of Catskill? Yes, that's something the board probably needs to send a letter corner. to these homeowners. And I would only say that as you guys cut the grass and stuff, you're better informed. As we're asking for committee help, mm -hmm. you're better informed knowing where we need to address these issues. Mm -hmm. And our engineer can address them with a letter or whatever to the homeowners yes. that they need to modify or take care of that problem before it becomes a problem. Exactly. They're, they're, they're properly... Right. Mr. Edenfield, are you aware of what we're talking about? Not so Okay. No. At, at Catskill and Strike Lane, for instance, that's the four-way stop, mm -hmm. you'll see a bunch of palm trees. They're now, when they were little trees, they weren't a problem. Mm -hmm. Now they're getting to a point that they're growing up into the power lines. They're leaning way out over the ditch system. Yes. And as nice as they do look, the homeowners are putting the burden on the water district to do something about it. So they, that, and we have another situation at Henson Drive and Strike Lane with a similar situation there. So we've got a couple of those places and those are only two that I can identify at the moment that we need to probably send letters to and they need to address that. Yeah, I talked to Ron about that. The, a new construction planted a bunch of cluches down the the, the uh, Bonita Bill right away uh, on the outside of the fence line that they put no in. Okay. The, the new house that's listed down there, twenty four thousand yeah. feet. Yeah. Yeah, because it's it's you know basically the problem is that 
if you're not if your property line is here, then you need to plant your plants in there so that you're never you know over over over, over your property line. Compensating to use the right of way. Sure. Right? Well, the twenty foot setback for fences. Yes. So why shouldn't it be the same twenty foot setback for bushes and trees and stuff? Agreed. Yes. I mean that's that's Benita's code. Yes. So yeah. outside the right way. Okay. And then, I don't know if this is where we should address on Benita Bill. We're back there, and the roofing company mm -hmm. has that road that's pushing the swale out, and now there's a bunch of roof tiles in the road. I saw that. Okay. Just that, yeah, just that there's thing. more of this. Aspect. There's a lot. Okay. They did. They had equipment out there, and they're actually like. Filling in the road and stuff. So I, there's got to. Okay. Yeah. So I hate to tell us this, we need to keep okay. moving along yeah, here. That's it. Sorry. So uh, anything else on the contracts uh, at this point? We, so we're going to table that to next month. Yeah, we approved Tony's. Uh, no, you no, you haven't approved Tony's. Okay, we need to. You asked Tony to come back next month. Now that was on on the other issue oh, of sure. the additional okay. trimming. So, if, if he if he chooses to bid on that. Okay, so if we you want it. What is additional your, work. All right, so Tony, what is your contract price then that you are looking for? It would just be the 5% increase on that. Line. So it's around 9900 Yes, a month. 90, yes. Well, it would yes. be a, be over 10000 in wounds. Yeah, it was, uh, it was like ten thousand thirty. It's ninety five hundred right now mm -hmm. times one point zero five is nine nine seven five. Okay. Okay. I mean, I don't want to swap over twenty five dollars, but no, it no, is. you're right. That's what it was. I, I remember. So nine nine seven five mm -hmm. for mo. Yes, that's the moment. And if you want to come back and look yeah. at the, the bush cleaning and the other stuff, that's it. What at least twice a year or once a year. Actually, the objective of that is that they do it all the time, and it doesn't become a. So it actually more cost effective, quite frankly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yes. It doesn't become a big issue. They just yes. take care of it. Okay. So that's an option for you. Do you, you want to approve? His no, I'm okay to make a motion to approve his five percent increase of mowing. Okay. And then next month we might add an additional. Put the motion on the floor. I motion to, to approve. Uh, the five percent increase in Tony's lawn services. I the motion carries. Okay. So, Mr. Chairman, if I may, yes, just to clarify. So, what you did was approve the price increase, and without saying it, that is for a a one year term. Is that correct? Is was that the intention? That was the intention. Yes. Okay. All right. So that will be done through an amendment of the existing contract. Since you're not changing all the other terms of the agreement, you're just changing the price and you're just changing the length of the term. That can be done as an amendment. That was the action, right, of the, of the, or do you want a brand new comp? That's what I'm trying to no, get. No, just admit that for this time and we'll talk about that next year. So okay. would that be go January to January? Or well, it should be September. We, the Are contract should be the fiscal, fiscal year. year. The, the, the fiscal contract fiscal ended year. October 1 to Correct. September 3rd. Yes. Okay. So that's the term and at a 5% increase in the price. So mm -hmm. let me ask okay. a dumb question. You had October, November, and December. Are you expecting the 5% increase in arrears for these previous three months or going from January on? So it's really a nine month in well, increase. That's, I can answer that question because our, the way our contract is written, it just continues on month to month if we don't renegotiate with them. So they've been paid up to the current mm -hmm. time. So this is what they're negotiating right now. So, so the negotiations for the remainder now, if we make it yearly, the nine months of the rest of this fiscal year. Correct. Is the 5%. When and that 5% increase. That's right. And if the board does not renew the contract beginning October 1 of 2023. It goes back to month to month. Well, yes, sir. At this increased price. I understand. That's fine. Okay, I made the motion. Yeah. Seconded, and I said aye. Yes, aye. Motion carries. Yeah. I'm clarified okay. and good. We good? Mm -hmm. You're welcome. Thank, right. you. Thank, you. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Policies and procedures. Okay. John. All right. Uh, there's been an, uh, drafts of improving of the current policy procedures. Uh, Mr. Bring and I have gone through, and we're 
We're making sure there's specificity for changes in Florida statutes to make sure that they're modified and updated. And now we've also discussed something new that doesn't exist, which will be the creation of a committee that will have at least one board member and several landowners in this committee that will review uh, the, uh, the bids, request for proposals, uh, any input from modification scope of work, we might come back to the engineering firm and say, hey, people here that are part of the community recognize there's needs to make changes. We see this firsthand, so the committee makes that recommendation to the board and say, hey, not only is the scope of work for cutting down the trees, but you know, there's more things you should look at because then the people are going to be the eyes and ears for the committee to then inform the board. Because the board can't go around a thousand acres every day and look what's going on. Mm -hmm. So that's basically the policy procedures. I think the spring will have all this mod modified and ready for approval and adoption of the January board meeting, correct? Yes, sir. Did I forget anything you want to add? Yes, sir. Uh, we also talked about uh, well, our website uh, procedures, website policy and, procedures yes. and, uh, and also um, I would like to add a policy on your public meetings um, while I'm doing it all and that would be where I would incorporate the three minutes yes sir the three minute time the public input on business agenda items only um, there's the there was a uh, the Florida legislature thought it was so important for public input in in these local meetings that they adopted a new statute about two years ago sometimes I have a time warp it may have been three years ago or four years ago or seven years ago no I think it was two or three years ago I think it was two or three years ago but anyway I'll add some language that addresses that too so that the legislature, when we go to ask for money, understands and appreciates that we're trying to do all we can to allow and recognize the importance of their new uh, legislation that they pass. So I want to pull some of that in too. And, uh, and then um, what Supervisor Solucci was talking about regarding the, the procurement procedure and also uh, just generally uh, to assist as, as the board would, would elect. And I'm not sure exactly how I'm gonna word that, but I'll work on that. Um, to, to have a committee, as we talked about it, we started out talking about it using a committee just in, in procurement matters, uh, just to review responses to requests for proposals and things like that. But then as we talked about it further, we realized that, that there may be other benefits to the district of, uh, of a, uh, of, of a group of uh, property owners who are appointed to assist in um, different things. Perfect example is Peter right now. He could be somebody to be officially part of a committee. He's helping with the FEMA funding. Right. Yeah. So there's, there's, you, you have to be somewhat careful sometimes with, with committees because if, if they are decision making committees, then we got to be careful that we uh, qualify and meet all the sunshine law requirements when they get together and things like that. So there's a there's a line we have to walk to in all of that. So I'll work on that language. Um, and then there was um, there was one other we talked for two hours. So yes, I don't remember. There was one other topic, but anyway, um, the intention is to bring everything back to the board for all the policies uh, that, that, that we're gonna work on and to bring it all back to the board at your January board meeting. Or so adoption and approval. Are you gonna incorporate uh, the cash policies and yes. the investment policies? Yes, all of the things all there, the want. ethics. Yes, yep. that, that was the other thing was ethics, the ethics. Yeah. Um, we're gonna make all of that connect back to um, the chapter 112 part 3 ethics provisions so that there's consistency the there yes. and then also on the investment policy when I looked at that I saw some things that appear to have changed over time uh, statutorily so we're going to try to fix all that we <coughs> create a form in that for say the board members or anybody else even like Mike that may accumulate 
uh, uh, mileage or whatever during the course of the month that we turn those in. And I would say that, that yes, okay. that's, I just want to make sure it was there. It's in so, the IRS. We're going to talk right. IRS. Yes. And I would also like to say that for the if we turn those in at a board meeting for Chris, then you'll always be paid a month in the rears. I don't have personally a problem with that. But that's if, if it makes it easier for you, Chris, instead of having to hunt them down and see that people get them turned in. Well, I usually send an email out to to people that um, send me bills, mm -hmm. and I give them. I send it out usually around the first week of the month, and I give them a deadline of when to get it to me if they want to get paid. So I can incl oh, in, cool. include include okay. all members. the board members, and if I know that there is committee committee members, I can include the committee members. And just for the benefit of the board members, it was discussed that because of accounting principles and stuff, we're no longer going to be paying for things and turning in receipts. We need to either use the credit card. That well, we, we, yeah, we have a time frame. Okay. That's, that's going to be a process. Okay. But. So if we're ready to move forward, anything else there? No, sir. No well, action is required. Yes, sir. Is there parts of it that are going to incorporate the job description or duties and kind of like an overlay of that? There are a number of the policies that reference employees of the district and, and employee procedures. And uh, so... Because what I'd like to do is once you and John get close to the finalization of that before the next meeting, get a copy of that and then I can meet with Chris and then her and I can really like definitely make it a little more defined. And there were... If, as I recall, That's we, had, we had sections in the policy yes. procedures talk about the employment of independent yeah, contractors. Yeah. So we, we have all that. So I think mm -hmm. when you talk about job description, yeah. it's supplemental to a supplemental, policy. Supplemental, correct. Yeah, so it's really not necessarily be incorporated in the policy procedures. No, the policy procedures just, just reference that if you do this, here's what the policy and procedures. Yes. Okay. The other but thing. the employees of the staff of the district, the manager and or the secretary, oh. treasurer's is not an independent contractor. Oh, that's a good question. They're not. They're not. They're not. Yeah. So, okay, so we W2 them. So, yeah. that, so okay. we had this question I didn't know. ourselves. We weren't sure. I didn't know. Yeah. Thank, thank you for coming and all that. Thank you. More um, so, in direct answer to your question, they're probably separate, but I also want to say that the policies manual is a uh, always subject to being correct, I get that. Changed. I fully understand. Yeah, so, modified yeah, I, I fully understand that. Yeah, and, uh, you know, it's a living document. It's always subject to, to being modified. As will these job descriptions. Yes, correct. Right, right. So we'll get something together, and if the board thinks it's appropriate to approve it, you can. Okay. And then the next month, if we see something that we need to modify an amend, we can modify an amend. Okay. So it'll be. Well, we got to put a stage in the ground. Yes, sir. Start. We got to get started so we can get finished. Okay. If everybody's good, we need to. We'll have it ready for next week. Yeah. All right. Okay. Our time. Motion to table. If you could entertain a motion to table this matter to the January meeting. Make a motion to table that until January. Thank you. Second it. All right. Thank you. Motion carries. Okay. Next item, Hurricane Ian. We've already spoke a lot about that, so we probably don't have a well, lot. So what you're going to do, that's where you're going to talk about the, the gate. Gates. Make the motion for the gate. Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, well, I made the motion, right? To put yes. a motion on the floor again to um, purchase the gates for the... Yes, I make a motion that we uh, purchase new gates, new gears, everything for... What's it, the Cockeshole? Still Stillwell gates? Maddox. 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 Yeah, whatever. Maddox. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Second it. And, and to end up, is, is there a not with who? Or is it just at the it, board's it's, discretion? It's open. It's open. It's shared. It's one, one board member needs to be assigned to work with the approval of that because it's an open ended approval. Right now, you are the approved person up under the FEMA emergency act. Okay, yeah. that, that's correct. Okay. So I'll take that on. Okay. So, so it was. It so, has to go through me for yes, final right. approval. So then the motion was to approve the purchase of the gates and to authorize the chair to take action to... We, we've actually already done that for previous those, meetings. To purchase those gates. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now that chair will take action. Oh, so, the motion yes. was carried. Yes. Yes. I seconded. 
Administratively, are we still talking that, let's say we go to Action Geek, it's still not until March before they're going to be installed? Maybe well, sooner? We, we will check on that and then we, as we move forward now we'll have better information, okay? Um, anything else on Hurricanes? So you're authorized to enter the contract to purchase the gates. That's right. the bottom line of yes. that much. Yes. Got it. No, sir. Okay, then we're going to move on to uh, 8991 Strike Line. I'm talking think? to the owner's attorney this week. Next slide. Okay. Okay. Manager's job description. I'm still working on the refinement of that. I'll get the manual and then I'm going to schedule to meet with. Okay, we'll again table that to the next meeting. Yeah. Okay, so go ahead and do the motion to table. Yeah. Motion to table the manager's job description. I'm assuming secondary Correct. treasurer's job description both from January. Yes. Chris. Second. Okay. Second that. Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Reimbursement. Uh, reimbursement uh, resolution. That's going to be done with the. Um, yes, sir. Okay. Part of the policy. Correct. Correct. That's been taken care of. We don't. No action to be taken on that. So I'll just say no action to take. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Uh, and so I'll get it to the right place at the right time in the right form. Funds assignment resolution. Same thing. No. No action needed to be taken there. Well, no, we do. We're going to table that to next month. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, just so we're consistent, Mr. Chairman. Yes. I apologize. Mm -hmm. Just to be consistent, if you'll do a motion to table that item, in fact, do a motion to table them both. Okay. So no. our record is straight. Oh, Rather okay. good. A reimbursement resolution. Yes. Sir. And the funds assignment yeah. resolution both. I make a motion to to table to next so January to be a reimbursement resolution. Jeff. And fund assignment resolution. I second. Aye. Aye. Motion's carried. You want? <laughs> we, didn't, we, we combined them together. together. You moved too fast. I was going to have you throw in the agenda format changes too, Two. because we're going to do that Two. in the pool. No, 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 no. I make a motion to reimbursement resolution, fund assignment resolution, agenda format changes, and anything else under Florida law. <laughs> <laughs> As amended. As amended. I second. I. Aye. Motion's so, carried. So Aye. Aye. Thank you, sir. Okay, now, nine, approval November uh, 21, 2022, regular meeting minutes. Jennifer, are you going to put a motion on the floor? Wait, wait, we no, have no way to the state of Florida. 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 We have the state, state of Florida. Florida. John state included Florida. that in the last one. No. Oh, no, I'm not sorry. The state of Florida. Not the state of Florida card. card okay, state program. of Florida card purchasing program. All right, so you all have to approve adopting the program, and then Jim, you have to sign. Okay, and who's authorized to use a credit card? Right you? now, we aren't that we're not there yet. This is to get us into in the, the system to get approval. Right. Okay. And then, and then there's going to be a lot of discussion about what do what do we want? Who, who's going to approve it? And okay. once we get this started. Okay. John, you have a promotional yeah, report for that. Sometimes. You want to see it again? No, no, no. Just let them approve it. Wait, wait. So I'm putting on the floor a motion for the state of the card version for review. Yes. Second it. Okay. Aye. 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 Motion carries. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Now can wait, we get wait, on wait, to I missed that one. What? No, no, no. Wait. They approved it. I second it. Chris, in. go back to sleep. I, <laughs> I ordered pizza. So. Okay. <laughs> Multitasking. Okay. Jennifer, this one's yours. Right. On, yes. on the credit card. Yes. Chris. Yeah, so Jennifer. approve Jennifer. the November 21st, 2022 regular meeting minutes. I second the motion. Aye. Aye. Oh, I so. <laughs> Did, Mr. Chairman, <laughs> yes, sir. I have that you added culvert cleanouts. That was something you wanted to talk yes. about. Yes. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, you did that. I did have that. Cleaning culvert. We've yes. already done this nine that will back up to. Yes, sir. And, okay. I'd like to uh, put a motion on the floor that we get bids. To do a culvert clean out, and I would like, and, and I'm going to get, bid, I would like to get bids for one or one street at a time, but I would like to possibly, with the money that we've gotten approved, include up to 10 or more streets, seeing as how we can get them done more economically if we include more. So uh, that's where I'd like to go with that. Now, we're not approving the actual purchase of it. But I'd like us to be able to bring the bids to the uh, table for next month so that before the rainy season, we can have this job done. Sounds like the first work of the committee for the procurement policy, right? 
Yes, sir. So we have a commission that could drag out. We were going to create the committee at the at the January board meeting as part of the policy. Well, it'll be created and have a job already to work on. Mr. Okay. Chairman, is that okay if we bring the your? If I understood your motion correctly, you wanted the request for proposals to go out now and for the responses to be back so you could make a decision at the January that, board meeting. That, that was the, and unfortunately, that was the actual request. And we're gonna have a lot more projects for this. For these Can you we have here's the work outline and define for the yeah, team? Uh, okay. Uh, well, I, was, I wanted to question that just a hair. Um, when the comment was made, you want the culverts clean. Correct. Do you also want the swales in between the culverts? Okay, that's two different. That can be that's a project. That's that can be the first project that's the for question. the committee. Okay, that's, that's the question. Okay. Now remember, this this item may may come under the FEMA project because this is something that's been discussed and something with the FEMA people. Mm -hmm. So, and this is something that was looked at by Dale and said that he believes it can be done under the FEMA project. So so my question to the board is, asking for the bids is not necessarily saying we're gonna approve the bids. Mm -hmm. Correct. So, yeah. Okay, we're, we're, I'm okay we're, with that. We're, having, we're, having, we're asking for permission to advertise for those, to see what kind of money it's gonna cost us. Now with this particular project, the, the, unlike you know, when you want a committee of people to do something, this particular project, the committee would then, where they would be really helpful, would be to find all the sewer rack people out there that can do the job and get us some prices. I, I've told you, I'm, I'm, I'm snowed under. I love what I do, but I'll tell you, last year before Hurricane Ian, I just, I, I really enjoyed doing this. I've been so busy since Ian with my personal life that I'm not finding much time to do it. But, I also realize that if we don't get some of this work done before the rainy season, you can't do it during the rainy season. Yeah, we need we need to move forward with some of this stuff yeah. so that we can get it done before the rain starts again. Well, I'll volunteer to the board that I will be a one man committee to go find the potential people to bid, but I need a scope of work. I need a document to send out people mm -hmm. say, this is the work. Here's an example, maybe a photo of a clogged up culvert. Give me I, a bid on well, cleaning these out. But just to be clear, we're just simply talking about cleaning out. We're products. talking about well, company the last lights of the contract okay. pipes are both. Okay. The, All pipe, the driveway call. Driveway, driveway call. Yeah. So what we're looking at doing, and I gotta know I gotta tell you, I know this project really well, John, because I'm the one that went out and did all the photographs of all the stuff. So and I'll be so I'll turn that stuff over to you if you would like. Yeah. So this but is the, a sweeper but, man. This is what was previously done by sweeper man. Not done by sweeper man. That and this my is what talking, was previously my, should have been done. And by my talking man. with Thrasher, he told me that it had been multiple years since the man actually cleaned anything. Oh, yeah. That the only that they were doing only the work in front of the culvert pipes, making it look as though they had done it. So you want so, Mr. Chairman, just to clarify because. I think what I hear you saying is prepare a request for proposals, prepare a scope of work, mm -hmm. release it all, give everybody an opportunity to respond, but to do all of that within time for the responses to be back here before the board at the January board meeting for approval and to give somebody in front of that time to review it. I'll be in February meeting. That'll never happen by January. You're, you're not going to get it. You'd be very lucky if you get anybody to respond between now and New Year's. Well, we I mean, won't. If we put it if we put it out on the street, we're looking the first at, of January. We're looking at the third Monday, and it does. It can be put out by phone calls. Make a phone call to Sweeper Man. Go on the internet. Find out what kind of companies do it. Put out phone calls to those companies. Well, request them to come out and take a look. I, I think we'd be more consistent to put together a document that can be it's, sent to it's, it's only two or three pages. To put, out a, to put out a scope of services, expectations, define the project. Okay. What then we're looking then, to then. Do. Put that out. It's We could possibly get that out by the first week of January. Okay. My understanding of what that scope is, though, is that one or two feet on each side of the culvert pipe itself, mm -hmm. down to the level, 
two inches below the level of the pipe mm -hmm. and the whole inside of the pipe mm -hmm. clean. Now, the one thing that I know from talking to, to the um, sewer viewer, Morgan, mm -hmm. is that if we provide them with property out here to dump on, mm -hmm. which in all reality, that is top soil, Mm -hmm. because it runs off your top of your soil, mm -hmm. then it, the prices are cheaper. Mm -hmm. And I do have several vacant lots. I hate to be the person to step up first, but I would say that maybe, well, you know what, if I can save the community money, but I'm in an awkward position. So okay. absolutely you are. I, don't, so, don't, don't, well, I'm not, I'm not really, I'm just saying don't that, you know that, that I, would much rather, I would much rather prefer that other people did it. I'm yeah. only was saying that. Well, so the way the way that that could be structured, though, Mr. Chairman, is the scope of services could say, give us a price if there is disposal in the district, and give us a price if you have to dispose outside. Yeah, to remove it. Right. But I highly suggest because you took some photographs, Jim, at least one or two photos of each end and then inside and one that's clogged up. Put that out in the bid so people who've never been here at least can see what am I bidding on. Don't make it all verbal description. Picture's worth a thousand words. Typically, typically when we issue a, a request for proposal, we schedule a non-mandatory, it could be mandatory pre-bid for all the contractors to be on site, certain time, certain date, and we go look. And so, but I still think you get them to come to prepaid but with a but as proposal as a photo. Right. But as an alternate, they're at their own discretion. If they don't want to show up for the prebid, they are warned they should come and look. Mm -hmm. So we we encourage the contractor to meet. We make ourselves available to do that. And by the same token, if they're not available or can't have somebody free to be here, then they are cautioned to come and look. And what I would what I would propose as a board member, being out here as many years as I have, that we start at this end of the subdivision and work deep into the subdivision. The roads, Catskill, Papillion, Penson are the flood roads right now. They, you know, and I'm talking both sides, I'm not talking one side, but I'm simply saying that this is where the water ends up, and so it's where it would be the deepest and the heaviest flows would be at this end of the subdivision because the most accumulation would be here. Working west to east, north to south. Mm -hmm. South to north. South, south to north. north. Okay. Because it drains because south. Because, because, because the three primary roads that flood right. happen to be Catskill, Penson, and the south field. West, oh, southwest corners. Yes. Southwest corners. Well, we're west here. Yes. And south. So right. we're west and south. West south. and south. And, and we cross the road, or you make a decision, Mr. Edenfield, to do all of the south roads first and come back and go across. Mm -hmm. Because again, they're all the ones in into the primary canal system. But in any event, you're talking about all of the district. Eventually, okay. right. we so, would that they're bidding on. I would like to see how far our money would go on getting that done. I was hoping to have matching grant money for this project, and that's why I wasn't saying anything. But right now, I don't know if we're going to get that this year. But if you ask, if in the scope of services you say it is for all the mm -hmm. culverts in the district, right. in and then if that, well, if that comes back and that number is too big of a number, then you can have that reduced to and this I would section, that section. That there are negotiations for that, that if we offer all of them, what's the rate versus... Five roads. Well, well, we'll ask them to bid the entire thing, but all our RFPs have a clause in there that the client's discretion or the uh, okay. owner's discretion, they can phase the job. Okay, we're going on 8 o'clock, guys. Uh, we stand here so. So, so, Mr. Chairman, so I apologize. The bottom line of all of this is getting this done and back before you for a decision in January. If, if, if it just, it, well, I don't. I personally don't think you'll you'll get many responses because the time period is just going to be too and you know something? Right. I think we should give it a shot. If we don't get it, we'll carry it over to February. But then it'll put us in a position. If we start now, at least we'll have a better position of February of ending. If we don't start now, that won't happen. We'll, we, we'll be putting it off to March. Yes. Sir, then yes. before they can start the work, we'll be in the rain. The other. Well, the only concern that I have is. 
if you tell the responders, they've got essentially, I, I'll bet it'll be like a week of time to respond to it, to put the response well, together. When, when, I don't think you're going to get many responses. Okay. When, when if, I, you say, if you say four weeks, if, you, if we say right now, we're going to make this decision come hell or high water. If, if we use the telephone, February, if, if we use the telephone, was a joke Morgan, Morgan was out within a week and gave us a price from Sewer Viewer. And they're one of the bigger companies in Lee County. So I think that if we use the telephone, make the phone calls for five or six different companies, we'll have a general idea what the value should be. Yeah, you guys get to the paperwork. Right? I'll make the phone calls. Okay. Yeah, we'll try for January. Yeah, right? yeah, 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 yeah. I think we can make a gallant run at making something happen. By January. That's all I said. But I, can I guarantee you? That's all I said. So, so let's do this if we if we can, because my biggest concern is just not getting good responses. Right. Because we've gotten. We've gotten minimal responses before to things. I would rather that not be our case this time. So, what if we said, what if we did this? What if the motion was to create and release the, the RFP with the intention of having the decision made at the January board meeting, but to authorize the chair, okay, if necessary, to extend that time to the February board meeting if it's just not going to fit, if it's not going to work, then give you the authority to move the date deadline date to the February board meeting. That works. How about I make the motion? Everything Mr. Prindle just said. Okay. Right, you going to second that? I'll okay. second that. Okay. 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 If he's okay with that. Flexes right. to him. <laughs> flexes to him. Nope. It flexes to him. And we're not going to publish until he says. Yes, sir. Until he says go. Did you hear that, Jim? Yes, sir. Did yes, you hear what he said? Yes. He knows. He uh, knows? Well, he will. He <laughs> will? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Tony, we're running out of time. Yeah, yeah. I just like yes. so much energy you have today, anyway, but let me tell you this. Usually, I've been listening one or one radio station for over 75 years, and a lot of people, when they want anything done, they advertise in one on one and they may find good results. On a radio so, station. A radio station. Advertise for when we need jobs like this. Yeah, but like when you're talking about making a phone call, if you advertise in one on one radio station, you will receive a lot of. 101 registration. Yeah. No, 101. I might get arrested if I start calling people and say, can you come and clean my pipes? <laughs> <laughs> 101. Yeah. Where are you okay. calling? 101 radio stations. <laughs> yes. 101 radio stations. So, yeah. 101 radio stations. Yeah. They're very right. good. Never heard of them. Let's try it. Really? 101, John. Okay, we have to move yeah. on, guys. Yeah. Okay, we, we've approved this. I will be speaking with Mr. Pringle to find out what I missed. Yeah. Uh, and there was there was a motion and a I'm second. I'm going to write what I missed. Right? Yeah. No, no, that, I, no motion. The uh, no, chair no, made a motion. Who nice. made the second? I, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Motion. By Supervisor John. Salucci made the motion. Jennifer seconded it. Yep. And it was approved I, unanimously. Okay. okay. That was it. We already approved the uh, November 21st, 122 yes. minutes. So we're going to move on to approve the November 2022 yes. bank statements, financial reports of December 2022 bills, and financial reports. John, any questions? No. You're going to approve this? Yes. Jennifer, would you like to make the motion? He didn't make the motion. Oh, he didn't make the motion. Approve it. You make one this time. Approve the November 2022. Thanks, statements and financial reports, uh -huh. December 2022, blue bills and financial I second the motion. Aye. Motion carries. Uh -huh. Aye. Supervisor discussion. No. None. None. Okay. Adjournment. Adjournment. Aye. So we don't need general. Aye. 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 <laughs> second. Who, who did that? I did. John, John did. Jennifer he, he seconded. He seconded. Yeah. And then Jim third did it. Yeah. And the, 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 the adjournment is at 8.02. <laughs> okay, we're down to two hours. I want to get it down to an hour and a half. There you go, guys. Exactly, two hours. I'll send you three, 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 three text photographs. Jim, I need you to sign that.
Uh, I don't know if you can see them. would have gotten them uh, probably right before the hands. meeting work. No, no, for, no, no. For, for, oh, the garden. <laughs> no. For, for I, the, I, 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 I was super impressed. I'm like, how does that happen? And then I took the pictures of the encroachment on the right of way like on the other side of the meeting. Very impressive. No, and honestly, the, uh, um, I definitely want to get together and a third wrap that up. I just like it drives me crazy. Debris. It's and just no wind. Uh, and like about uh, thirty yards in before the before the dividing gate mm -hmm. on the west, west, west. Yes, and you, and you see somebody dumping there. No, no, it's it's it's, it's, it's like and by the way, it's like, oh, 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 oh